come back. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy couple of days. So you've had to watch four videos in the last two days. If you haven't watched those videos, you're probably going to be lost today. And you need to get those videos watched so you understand what we're talking about today. Okay? When last we met, we um, took a test. So if you weren't here on Tuesday, if you didn't make it on Tuesday, you still have that test waiting for you in the uh, resource center. Please get that done before, for sure, get that done before next week. Um, today is also, because we had snow day yesterday, today is um, Unit Circle Project Day. So if you have your Unit Circle Project, make sure it's made it to the back of the room at some point in time. Make sure that you've also filled out the retina burning red half sheet um, to go along with said project. Okay? Good times. So I'm going to start today by kind of, well, I shouldn't say start today. Today is going to be, is, they're, up here, they're up here. Today is going to be kind of a recap of the last two days. Okay. Um, so, and then we'll, and then we'll extend that on Tuesday. Okay. So, some observations here first of um, sine and cosine. So, there are the two. I tried to fit them onto one, once, you know. Um, this up just a little bit. I tried to fit them on to one so we could see them all, so we could see them both as opposed to being on two screens. They're both basically the same. The, the parent function, the mother function, if you will, of sine and cosine are there. Okay? Top one is cosine, bottom one is sine. Now, a couple of observations that we need to know about them. Okay? First off, Memorize the pattern. Okay. Sine starts in the middle, then it goes up to the high point, back to the middle, down to the low, back to the middle. Okay. Everything in the middle is always the, in between a high and a low. Okay. It can never go middle, middle. It can never go high, high. It can never go low, low. It's always got to go through the middle. So the middle is going to be every other one. Cosine starts up high, middle, low, middle, high. And of course, cosine starts high, ends high. Sine starts middle, ends high. Okay? And you need to graph one wave. So one wave of these would be, here would be one wave of my cosine. Here would be one wave. No, nope, I lied. Too far. You got all cosine. Here would be one wave of my sine. Okay? So those are the waves, the first waves. Okay? Now, what you should have found out on Wednesday is that the, the domain of both of them is always all real numbers. Okay? That's the easy one, because for sine and cosine, it's always going to be all real numbers, because you're never divided by zero. On the other four, you have the opportunity to divide by zero, so the other four have restrictions in the domain, but sines and cosines don't. Okay? For now, because there is nothing that comes after the trig function, the middle is going to be at zero. On Tuesday, we will change that. Okay. On Tuesday, we're going to handle vertical shifts and horizontal shifts of these graphs. And so there will be something in that purpley. The amplitude is the number out in front of the trig function. If there's nothing written, 
then we assume that to be 1. Just like if it were x, the coefficient on x is 1. Okay. To find the maximum point, that is then you take the middle and you add it to the amplitude, or you add the middle and the amplitude together. And the middle minus the amplitude is the low point. Those two combine to give me my range. The range is always low, comma, high, with brackets because it's included. Low, comma, high. Then. So that was all Wednesday. Then yesterday, we talked more about this B value. And this B value comes in as the coefficient after the cosine, or the sum, after the trig function. So that we have a little bit of for this period, we said that that was equal to 2 pi divided by b. And b is that coefficient inside the trig function. So in this case, it's 1, so it's 2 pi divided by 1. So the normal period would be 2 pi. On Tuesday, we're going to add or subtract a number inside the parentheses. I should make those arrows go a little bit more inside the parentheses. We're going to add and subtract a number inside the parentheses, and that's going to horizontally shift the start of our first last wave. Okay? So if there's nothing there, then the start of our first last wave is at zero. Start plus period gives me my end. Now, when you go to actually graph these functions, we ask for eight labels on your axis. Three vertical, so we would expect on your vertical that you would have your high value, your middle value, and your low value. So we expect those three on your axes vertically. On your horizontal axes, we would want, oops, we call it the start, the end, and then these three other key points in between. Okay? And those three key points are actually relatively easy to find. If you know your start and you know your end, the middlest of the middle one horizontally is the average of those two. And then the left half, the middle of the left half, is the average of the start and the middle. Or the start and this this in-between point. So these two average to get me this one. These two average to get me that one. These two average to get me that one. Okay? So it's three averages. 
Now for today, because we're starting at zero, those averages are pretty easy to do. But Tuesday, when we're not starting at zero, then you've got to do some figuring. You've got to do some math. Okay? Any questions on that? And again, that goes for both sine and for cosine. Okay? Let's get into then some graphics. When I paused it, it was at 10, 30, 10 minutes, 35 seconds, and 0, 0, 10 .0, 0 35.0010. All happening in the last 12 months. Yeah. And I've been doing you know, this, and I've been doing this for seven years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so. Our graph is we want to go with one half cosine. I'll do the easy one. The domain is all real numbers. You tell me one of the other eight. Is what? Okay, I would agree. <laughs> Another one? What would another one be? One half's the high, what's the low? Negative one half. I agree with both of those, not necessarily in the order that we did it, but I agree with them. Okay. The order I would have done it in is I first would have found my middle. Where's my middle? Zero. Okay. So my middle's at zero because there's nothing that comes after the trig function. What's my amplitude? One half, because it's the number that's in front of my trig function. So my amplitude is one half, which means from zero I go up one half, that gets me to my high of one half. And down one half, that gets me to my low of negative. Well, is there a set of parentheses after my trig function with the variable and some other number in it. No? So that means I start at zero. For my period, I have to go 2 pi divided by b. What is my b? Value one. So two pi divided by one is two pi divided by one is two pi. Throwing out softball should be able to answer this even if you're not paying attention. So if my start is at zero. And it takes me 2 pi to get a full lab in. Where's my end? 2 pi. Now, helpful hints from doing this for many, many, many moves. I don't put my label on the graph yet. I put my function on my graph first. And really, starting on Tuesday, what I'm going to have you do, if you're in 
in my classes is you're going to draw the function first, then you'll put in the crosshairs wherever it needs to go. Okay? I start with my function first, then add everything up. So since this is a cosine, it starts up on high, down to the low, ends back up on high. Now, to complete my graph, I need to add my pieces of 8. Okay? So I need to add in my high value, my middle value, and my low value. Horizontally, I need to add in my start, my end, then I've got to do three averages. Half of 2 pi is pi, so my middle middle is pi. Half of pi is pi over 2. In between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Anytime you're producing a graph for us, those three blues and five oranges need to be on. Or you will get one. Love it. Try that. So the easy one is, is that the domain is all real numbers. Okay? Nothing coming after the function. So that puts my middle at zero. The number out in front of my function is my amplitude which then means that the high is purple plus blue and the low is middle minus amplitude which puts my range negative one pop nothing coming after the X inside the parentheses, so that tells me that my start is zero. However, I do have a B value, so I need to go 2 pi divided by my B tells me that my period is pi. So in order to make one complete lap, I start at zero, I end at pi. This is a sine curve, so it's going to start low, excuse me, start middle, go up high, down low, and back to the middle. Went all the way up to positive one. Went all the way down to negative one, halfway point is zero. I know I went down a little too far on that one, but that's okay. Graphs don't have to be perfect. And then horizontally, I started at zero. I ended at pi. Halfway for that would be pi over two. Left half would be pi over four. Right half would be. Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. Let's put those two together now. Okay. And graph me this one. All right. So, domain is going to be 
all real numbers. Nothing coming after the after the fact, so our middle is going to be at zero. We have a number out in front, and that number is negative three. But amplitude, if we ever ask you, amplitude is always positive when we give it. And the negative sign you should have learned in one of the videos just flips it over. Okay? Okay? But the actual amplitude is three. It's the absolute value of A. So that puts our high at positive three, our low at negative three, makes our range be always in between negative three and positive. Nothing that comes after inside the parentheses, so we're starting at zero. However, we have a B value, and that B value is one half. So 2 pi divided by 1 half is going to be 4 pi. So my period is 4 pi, which means I am going to end at 4 pi. Get started at zero. It's a sine function with a negative a value. That means we're going to go down first, then back. Filling in my eight key numbers, positive three, zero, negative three, zero, four pi, half of that is two pi, half of that is pi, and the average of the other two is three pi. Agree? Good, good times. On Tuesday, what we'll be getting into is we will be getting into vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. We're going to tackle both of those in one day to try and get caught up. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Again, the videos are still posted if you if you need to go rewatch them and take some more notes or get into the resource center and get some extra help.